in general you could say that a business analyst position might deal with more strategy kind of projects r- closer to like a consultant role maybe a uh, data analyst would be more numeric but still on the data wrangling slash data handling side Welcome to another episode of Engineering Ashkal. Today we have someone really cool with us. His name is Abhijit Ashok. He did both bachelor's and master's in electric and electronic engineering from Bits Pilani Goa. He then pursued another master's from Harvard University in health data science. He is now working as a data scientist at Microsoft. Why did he decide to do two MAs and how did he manage to get into Microsoft? Let's find out. So hi Abhijit. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. You got into Bits Pilani. That got up to in a Goa campus which is like an aspirational college for many engineers. Can you tell us about the experience there? Was it like all studies or you also went out for a little bit of parties because Goa is the, you know, uh, <laughs> party capital of India? Just because it's Goa doesn't didn't mean that the academics was any less rigorous. It was like really really intense actually so um unless you sort of uh, kept track with what was being taught and was like kind of at least like somewhat up to date with things here and there it was it was really difficult to um sort of you know mug up things at, on the day before the exam and actually get like a really good score there were people who did it don't get me wrong there were people who were really made for it and people who were like completely dedicated people with like photographic memory and people who were born to be engineers and everything but i was certainly not one of those people um and uh, there were a lot of struggles for sure but i think the fact that it was goa definitely helped because whenever you're having like a bad mental health day there was always a place to go to and just like sit on the beach uh, enjoying the sea breeze and the land breeze um to sort of relax your mind and remind yourself that are that are bigger things in this world than just like a, a an a grade or something at the college were part of various committees clubs so tell us that how these committees and clubs helped you grow personally and professionally i i didn't really feel passionate about like engineering or like science as such um at least like when i came into it because of that it was really difficult to connect to any of the uh technical clubs that are in campus um they're like really great uh ways for people who are passionate about it to develop their skill and get more connections and network themselves and uh you know get themselves more exposure but i didn't relate to any of them uh but i was i was part of like uh i i tried to sort of rejuvenate my rc side through the clubs in campus so i was part of the the mind club of the campus i was part of like the department of like journalism which basically did like some kind of like in campus reporting it is not like because i was part of this club and that department uh, i just got like a really cool job later or you know that 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 really got me through like a fantastic admission or something but i feel like working as a part of those clubs and departments definitely gave me a sense of responsibility and gave me a sense of leadership that later manifested in like a lot of different ways in my career and uh, it's also it also builds a lot of like organizational skills and the hard thing is that all of these things that i mentioned are intangible you can't really quantify it using like a measurement like you can't give yourself a score of 70 on 100 i feel like the club the club and the department were very helpful for my mental health um which was which was definitely taking a toll because i was i was feeling suffocated in a place where i didn't feel uh very related very relatable to the particular cause i was there to fulfill which was basically study engineering but being part of the clubs and departments being part of the various putting putting together various acts and like practicing for it and like ideating for it and everything definitely helped me help keep my mind much calmer and prevented me from falling into that pit okay coming to the end of your time at bits 
what were the like you know three biggest learning that you had probably like you know uh, abhijit as a person who was before bits and after bits so was there any difference that you saw in within yourself uh, one of them would be to sort of um, remember that things will definitely come your way uh you sort of have to you sort of have to keep in mind that just because you're in a bad spot right now and just because uh things don't seem to go your way at the moment doesn't mean that it's always going to be the case and in like a country like india where the academic environment is like so rigorous and it's not conducive for like a peaceful environment of learning for at least for like a lot of people i'm not saying everyone but at least for a lot of people uh it's it's more of like a very competitive uh competitive scenario and not all of that competition is healthy it's more like uh if if you if you if you tell someone that you cannot handle something it's more of the answer is more often deal with it than how can i help you deal with it you know and that's really really unhealthy the second one would be to what i what i just ended the last one with to keep an eye out for everything and um so just because something doesn't work for you right now doesn't mean that nothing else is going to come your way so you always got to remember to keep your eye out for like new opportunities and uh, new ideas that come your way and uh, sometimes the thing that you thought that would that you would never do in life might be the thing that I might actually speak to you because uh, there isn't much initiative to sort of introduce children to the amount of options they have in the society that we live in number 3 would be just enjoy life you know this this uh, college as college life in particular is like very valuable and when you look back later you're not going to remember that one lecture that taught you the most important equation in fluid mechanics you're probably going to remember the time you spent with your friends or that that outing you took out of nowhere when you know it was like a long weekend or something if you don't enjoy your college life with like such experiences it might be like a regret later looking back so from bits you were placed at zs associates as a business analyst so uh, tell us about the selection process what was it like a college placement or you like found it like on your own process if i remember it was it was like a what was it it was like a written round there was like one written round where it was like something like a case study and you had to like analyze the case study and identify the problems in it bring out solutions and everything and then there were like three interviews one of them were one of them was like basically going through the case study and explaining what exactly you did and um, another one was basically they gave gave like a spreadsheet or something and with like some data in it and you were supposed to like identify the problems with that data like you know missing values and wrong units or whatever so it's basically checking how quickly can you catch problems with the data and then the third one was uh with like a principal level person it was more like a mini case study in itself they give give you like a problem and uh, uh show you some graphs and something and then you have to like deduce the output and whatever uh i remember that i the case i couldn't complete the case study per se but whatever i did i think i did a pretty good job with it and um the the data quality part of it was pretty good i i did like really well in that i remember because my internship also focused on that particular aspect a lot so i was i already had some training in that and i remember i i flunked to that mini case study part entirely um because i feel like from what i remember the question was kind of incomplete and i i think they expected me to understand that and ask more ask for more information but i wasn't aware that that's what i was what i was supposed to do so i tried to like work with what i had and i didn't have anything to work with so i remember that i flunked that but then since i did well on the other things i guess that's why they hired me for the role so you uh, said that you wanted to uh, wanted the data science position but uh, they like it was not there so you went for business analyst are there any like difference in the role per se that uh, of a business analyst and a data analyst i guess it's very company dependent there is no one single differentiation that you can make uh some companies when they say business analyst it they just mean someone who opens an excel sheet and you know does some input some formulas into an excel sheet and get something out of it while some companies like i know i know that american express uh, when they say 
okay we want a business analyst they mean someone who's like more hardcore with uh, machine learning algorithms and uh, who's someone who's like more adept with like coding and data wrangling and everything same case with data scientists when some companies say data scientists they usually just want to get on that bandwagon because data science is like really fancy and cool these days and everyone wants to be on it so for them they say data scientist but then they don't really have data to work with so uh, you end up just exploring some data sources here and there without really like making much out of it whereas when it's like a data scientist role in one of the bigger tech companies it's usually the case where you have like really vague but really really impactful problems to deal with and it's like a lot of data exploration and data wrangling and machine learning modeling and what not so i guess the spectrum is like really really wide but in general you could say that a business analyst position might deal with more strategy kind of projects r- closer to like a consultant role maybe a uh, data analyst would be more numeric but still on the data wrangling slash data handling side while a data scientist might still do like a lot of data wrangling and everything but would do a lot of like modeling as well there are a lot of co- colleges nowadays who have uh, specific stem courses based on these subjects so do you recommend a person doing these courses or like going doing it on go like you did like it was based more based of your interest and experience which you did personally you didn't like per se pursued a hardcore two years course on that so will you recommend a person to go for a like a hardcore course or do it yourself when i was i was actually in that position where i was just trying to decide what to do and i found that okay i, I have an interest in data like analytics or data science uh, there weren't really many options to go with i guess there were like some courses offered by these uh, educational consultancies out there at that point in time i i didn't really and i don't really know enough to make that choice for myself coming to people in that position right now i wouldn't say it's a bad idea to do it because uh, if you're trying to learn on the go there are always certain limitations because especially when if you don't have a mentor it's like you have to figure out the direction you want to go in yourself and that may not be the best direction to go with because data science is like extremely exploratory and very very vague and there are like a thousand different directions to go in at every single point in time and there is no there is no right answer that tells you that okay this is the best direction to go into it's like almost always like a call that you're making in the particular situation so without a mentor it's really difficult to know whether you're going in a good direction or not if you can like talk to people who are in the field maybe like show the curriculum to them and see what they think about the curriculum um and whether the curriculum matches with what they are trying to learn from because some people are more interested in the business side of it some people are more interested in the math side of it so or stats for that matter so uh whether that curriculum aligns well with their interests and whether that curriculum is any good first of all is something that you should uh sort of like confirm with people who are already in the field that you can trust or even if you don't have any you don't have anyone like that just try to like message someone on linkedin and ask them more often than not i imagine people will help out like if i know i know that some if someone reaches out to me i'll definitely help them out irrespective of whether i know them or not in the microsoft office like four interviews back to back 45 minutes each so overall like six rounds and the entire process took like two months for the first interview till the offer came in so it was like not too long but not too short either mm-hmm.